So tonight my message is called How to Turn Your Faith Loose. Can I see by a shout or a voice or a something or a jumping or a pointing or a whatever or a bumping is that how many of you are ready to turn your faith loose? Okay, I'm in the right place tonight, okay? The guys that didn't shout, they got to go and sit in the blue seats. All right. Praise God. So I'm so excited to teach this message. What an important message it is. And a message that is sometimes misunderstood or misinterpreted. And so therefore, in the last couple of lessons that all my esteemed colleagues uh, and preachers have brought, we have talked about uh, in Romans 10, 10, we've spoken about what it means to believe in the heart. All right? What it means to believe in the heart. And we're continuing on our series of foundations. Foundation. So we spoke about, Teacher Paul spent a lot of time last weekend and he spoke about what it means to believe in the heart, not in the mind, but what it means to believe in the heart. Now tonight, we're going to be looking at the second part of Romans 10, 10, and we're going to see, and it says, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So that is what we're going to be speaking about, about confession. And I'm going to take you through various types of confession and show you how it all fits in, all in the New Testament, Nohal, as well. And so you can apply this to your life, depending on your journey, your next steps in your journey with the Lord. Amen. So the the, the title, subtitle is how to activate your faith tonight. All right. And so let me start off by saying, Four kinds of confessions that we're going to be dealing with here tonight. Now, these are four types of confessions that are made in the New Testament. Four uh, confessions that are made in the New Testament. So it's not Old Testament confessions. It's not Roman Catholic confessions. It's not the Protestants or the, I don't know what, I don't know. I just know charismatic. That's all I know. All right. So four different types of confessions made in the New Testament. Amen. Amen. So, number one, here we go. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Number one, the Jews' confession of sin. So we know the situation here, and this speaks directly to the time when John was baptizing according to the the gospel of baptism or the gospel of repentance. So when we speak about the Jews in that setup, they were not Christians as yet. The Jews of the time were Jewish people. They were living under the law. They were believing in the law. And here comes a man that paves the way before Jesus. And he says, repent. And he preaches a gospel of repentance and tells people to repent. In actual fact, Jesus goes on and he also says, you must repent. So we can see clearly that there is a confession of sin. And the reason why I put it as the Jews' confession of sin, so it's not a Jewish saying, Right? (laughs) It's not a Jewish saying. It is the first people that were hearing the gospel were Jewish. All right? So we see here that we're talking about the confession of their Jewish sin. Now, I'm not here to bash Jewish people or anything like that. In actual fact, I teach on Judeo-Christian studies. It is a subject very close to my heart. But we must understand the topic that we are talking about here. Because they were steep in their culture. They were steep in their religious practices. John was preaching and saying, you need to repent of all these things. Before, because we are talking about this in the New Testament. We're talking about how is a new born again believer. I'm giving you foundations upon which you can build your faith. That's what we've been hearing the last five, six weeks. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. So confession is part of those steps. But the first thing or the first type of confession is the confession of the Jewish sin. And we find ourselves sometimes in the same place. We might not be Jewish. We might have not have Jewish culture. But we are finding ourselves where we are sinful or living sinful lives. And that sin has to be confronted. That sin has to be confessed. Amen? All right. Now, let's have a look at it. Okay? So here it goes. It says here in the Bible in Mark, it says, This messenger was John, the Baptist. Tells you what he was doing. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized. Why? 
to show that they had repented of their sins. In other words, baptism is something you do after you've repented of your sins. Baptism is something that you do after you've dedicated your heart to the Lord in a modern context. So we see here, so I've got to say, yes, I realize that I've done something wrong. I'm sinful in my nature. And because of repentance of sins, now baptism can happen. And it goes on to say, and turned to God to be forgiven. Now you will remember the Jewish people specifically in those days would have a once a year uh, an atonement that would happen for them. So they would sin the whole year. Okay, guys, it's almost 365 days, a couple of more sins, and then, hey, clean slate. Okay, okay, let's do this, quickly that, steal a couple of hubcaps there, do this. No, no I'm only kidding, but you understand what I'm trying to say, amen? But, but, but Peter, uh, uh, John, not Peter, uh, John comes in and he says, listen, yeah, look at this. You need to repent now of your ways. Don't wait for a time. Don't wait for the right thing. And in the same way, family, we as Christians, as believers, there comes a time when you have to repent, repent of your sin. And you have, to, you have to turn to God to be forgiven. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. We've all done that. Amen. And if you haven't done that, then tonight I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. All right. It goes on to say here, and all of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. So baptism, as we always say, is an outward demonstration of an inward transformation. Because I've given my heart, because I've repented, I'm now demonstrating to the world, listen, I have repented and I've asked God to forgive me. Jesus also said in Mark 1 verse 14 and 15, repent ye and believe the gospel. So Jesus confirms what John is doing in the wilderness. Repent and believe the gospel. The gospel of what? That's what we're going to be looking at. So I want you to know that this was not a Christian baptism. It's not possible that it could have been a Christian baptism because Jesus had not yet died and not risen yet. Uh, a typical Christian baptism would do the following. Quickly side teaching on the teaching, okay? Christian baptism says the following, three things. I am crucified with Christ. He was not yet crucified. I am buried with Christ. He was not yet buried. And I am resurrected with Christ. Not yet resurrected. So it was a, 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 it was a confession of sin. And baptizing, acknowledging that I've been sinful, I repent of my sin, and God has forgiven me. Is that good with everybody? And that is the same step that all of us have gone through or that all of us will go through. You, there will come a time when you will feel, listen, I've just had enough of all the sinful living and, and I, I just can't do it. And I repent and ask God to forgive me. Step one in my life as living as a successful Christian. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Okay. You guys taking notes? Write that down. I must take notes. Okay. All right. Number two. The confession of the sinner under the new covenant. So what we looked at in step number one was under the old covenant, or there was not yet a covenant made because Christ had not yet died, right? Now we see, how do I confess as a sinner under the new covenant? And I'm using the word sinner here because I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad, but I just want to name it for what it is. Is that okay with everybody? Okay? Okay, good. All right. Okay, fine. I'm going to go on. Even if you don't like it, I'm just going to go on. Okay. Look here what it says here under number two. The Holy Spirit convicts the sinner, not the believer. If you're a believer here tonight, the Spirit of God will never convict you. It is the word inside of you that will convict you. But as a sinner, the Spirit of God will convict you. Now, I know some of you are saying, because you've got your Bibles open there in Leviticus already. 
Say, Pastor Johnny, where is it in the Bible? I'm so glad you asked. Let me show you quickly. But in fact, for those of just go to Leviticus 27, I think it is, if you're there. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Jesus speaking. Because if I don't, the advocate, the Holy Spirit won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. To do what? Let's see. And when he comes, he will convict, convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness, number two, and of the coming judgment, number three. The sinner. The world is the sinner. The world is a type of the sinner. Amen? Not a believer. If you're a believer today, the Spirit of God does not convict you. Amen? So when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin. Then it goes on to say, now listen to this. this is, when I saw this, it's so powerful. Listen to this. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. The sin of the world for the sinner is that they refuse to believe in God, in Jesus. Sinners will not go to hell because of sin. They will go to hell because they don't, re- they don't receive him or believe in him. Okay, that was, I, I'm preaching better than what you guys are cheering. But in any case, so let me just go on to verse number 10. All right. Righteousness is available because I go, I can see some of you are now, and even in Deuteronomy, Leviticus, you got your concordance out now, checking all this out. But it's in the Bible. Okay. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world, the world, the sinners, okay, has already been judged. Amen. Sin, the, ru- the ruler of, 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 of this world has already been judged. Sin has been dealt with. Jesus paid the price. Well, he's about to pay the price. Amen. Now notice what Jesus said. I want you to notice what Jesus said. Number one, he said of sin because they believe not in me. We're talking about the sinner, number two type of confession. Number one, the confession of a Jewish confession. In other words, those that are not yet in the new covenant. You confess and repent your sin. It's it's a type of a confession. The second one is the confession of the sinner, a person that is not yet a believer. How do they? Who convicts them? The Spirit of God convicts them. So as I said, Jesus said, you are convicted of sin because they don't believe in me. So if you don't believe in Christ, that sin will keep on convicting you until you repent. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you have in your walk somewhere along the line, maybe perhaps you know somebody, maybe you've heard of it, maybe something happened to you, that you know that I remember in my life, where before I got born again, sin would convict me. And I would feel terrible and I would repent every week or every second, especially if I'm watching Benny Hinn on TV and I wasn't even born again. I would be so convicted. And that's why I will show you tonight, that's not all that you need. You need all four types of confessions to really be free in Jesus' name. Otherwise, you're just going to live from conviction to conviction to conviction. And when you're in that vulnerable place, okay, you will always repent. Number two. The Holy Spirit will convict the sinner. And then number three, the sin is the rejection of Jesus Christ. Sinners do not go to hell because of sin. They go to hell because they reject what Christ has done for them, what Christ has paid for them. They don't have to suffer. They don't have to feel convicted. They must just receive what Jesus has done on the cross for them. Amen? Oh, no, my goodness. That's the gospel right there. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. I don't know how, I mean, I mean, it's like you've done, just think of it and you all have done it. So don't be like, mm, not me. Think of the worst thing. Just for, don't tell somebody now because, you know, that might take a while. So just, just, just think for a minute. Really deep in your heart. Maybe look at some of those ashes in your life. And I want you to know that even as disgusting as that is, he does not see it. All that the Father sees, whether you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You see, because family, his blood, 
is the blood on the mercy seat. And when God sees the blood of Christ, what he has done, that he's died for you, he does not see the law by which you are judged underneath on the mercy seat. He sees the blood and he passes over you. And we go on. If you openly declare, here's the scripture that we're working on, the foundation. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We got to make a declaration with our mouth. We got to make a confession with our mouth. Amen. That's the second part. We got to make a declaration with our mouth. You ready for number three? All right, here we go. Number three. The believer's confession of his sins. Ha ha. Now we're getting closer to home, all right? So just to summarize, we spoke about the Jewish confession of sin. Those are people that are not in covenant with God at all, but they still repent of their sin. And when they do that, um, uh, the Lord forgives them. And a demonstration in, the, in, in biblical times, uh, John and Jesus said, it, be baptized. So they were talking about the, uh, the baptism of repentance, the baptism of repentance. We saw then that the, the confession of the sinner, that person has got to confess his sin to God. He's got to confess his sin to God. And number three here, now that I'm a believer, how many of you figured it out, family, that even though we are born again, we sometimes make mistakes? There's sometimes a little sin that perhaps creeps in that shouldn't be in our lives, but it happens. So here's the important thing that we need to know. Believer's confession of sins is when he or she is out of fellowship with God. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 that your sin has separated you from your God. So we see here that this confession number three is something that we have to do on a regular basis, hopefully not every second, okay? All right, because then it's a problem. Then we have to go back to confession number two, maybe confession number one. But the point is this, is that as a believer, there's a confession of sin that you can make when you are out of fellowship with God. Because if you're in him, you will reflect him. If you are not in him, you cannot reflect him. Lots of word, lots of faith. Little word, little faith. It's, it's equally, equally proportioned. The amount of faith is the amount of word that you can speak. So therefore, little faith, little word, little speaking. Little abundance of the heart or no abundance of the heart. Does that make sense? And so I understand today because many people as sinners beat themselves up. Now, this is not a license to sin. Okay, well, I've said, okay, Father, thank you. You forgive me, amen. All right, I'm okay again. You know, and you do this like 15 times in a minute. There's a problem there, right? It's now very quiet in this Presbyterian church. So let's look at what the Bible says. But if we confess, I love this, 1 John 1 verse 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from wickedness. Another translation says all unrighteousness. And I love that. So let's just quickly break this down here is that I want you to know is that family is that, but if we confess our sins to him, so as a believer, the confession of the believer, you and I, for the most part, everybody that's here, okay? The confession of your sins to him, say, Lord, I've messed up. The Bible gives us a way of how we are to come to the Lord. Not like a worm, not like a second class citizen or anything like that. But we can come boldly to the throne room of grace to receive help in our time of need. And so we say, Father, according to 1 John, I remind the Lord. I say, Father, your word says in 1 John 1 verse 9. I'm making confession now. That if I confess my sin to you, and Father, I confess the following, and I would name it. But say it to him. And I said, now, now your word says that you are faithful and you are just to forgive me from all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness because the opposite of unrighteous is then righteous. Therefore, you make me from unrighteous, you make me righteous or in right standing with God. As if I have never 
sinned. I love that. Can you imagine? It might just be for a second until you think the next nasty thought. But at least for a second or two, you're in right standing with God. And, and as a Christian, we grow. And then it becomes a minute. And then it becomes an hour. Then it becomes hours in a day where I'm in right standing with God. And eventually it becomes a day. And then it becomes two days and I'm in right standing with God. No sin comes through my mind. No, no evil is spoken through my lips. I just live in perpetual happiness and in grace with God. And sometimes now days go by where I'm in complete righteousness with God. Or weeks or months or years that I am in complete right standing with God. But if we make a mistake, we can bring it to him and confess it. You see, sin brought out in the light is no longer concealed. You see, family, broken fellowship will many times cause sickness to come into your body. If you don't do this as the believer, many times sickness can come into your body if you don't do that. Pastor Johnny, I want a scripture. Thank you. James 5, 16. Confess your sins to each other. Now, this is not talking about like the Roman Catholic priest. Father, it's been 25 days since I've sinned last. I don't know how it goes because I've never been there, but I've watched movies, okay? All right? But, and people would confess and then the priest would give absolution. It's not possible. The only one that can give absolution is the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen? But this is talking about what we are actually doing right here at church also is that when you confess your sins to each other, you have relationship with friends in groups. Amen? Is that right? I mean, we have the guys running on the roof team and we have the guys cycling and running and doing this and uh, cooking and baking and going out and just cough the coffee, the coffee group and the, and the other noho kopi coffee group and, you know, all those. And so you share most of your, your concerns, your fears, your hurt, your pains, your sins with your friends. The Bible says, confess it to each other. But also in an environment of freedom, where people, there's so many things that are holding them back, they just can't get loose from that. I want you to know here at Christian Family Church, church through our groups, and, and we're starting some of our, 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 our freedom groups now, like marriage, biblical foundations of marriage, and also marriage on the rocks. If, if you're struggling in that area, you can always come and you can confess your sin. So you're not confessing as in, forgive me for I've sinned. You speak about it. Now listen to this. Confess your sins to each other. Realize that what you've done is wrong. Confront the situation. Turn your ashes into beauty. And pray for each other so that you may be healed. Healed from the broken heart. Healed from that sin in your life. Whatever it might be. Amen? Once you repent and ask for forgiveness, God does not have any memory of the sin that broke your fellowship. Yeah. What? An awesome God. I thank God for grace. I thank God for the word. That because when I quote the word, the word is ultimate authority. It's higher than truth. We were talking about it tonight before we came in here. That the word of God is higher than truth. Because the Bible says, I, he puts his name above his word. Or the word above his name. It is a higher truth. It's a veritas. It's a measuring stick. Amen. And God does not have any memory of the sin uh, that, uh, that you broke the fellowship. Let me give you three scriptures to prove that. Number one, this can become a confession for you. Yes, I, yes, I alone will blot out your sins from, for my own sake, for God's sake, not for my sake, for my own sake. And I will never think of them again. Come on, I don't know about you guys, but I sense a rattling coming on, all right, in the spirit. All right, number two, come on, come now. Let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, red, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. Whatever stain there is on your life, he will change it 
completely. This speaks, uh, yes, I don't have time to teach on it, but okay. Number three, <laughs> okay. Uh, he has removed our sin. As far as the east is from the west, he has cast it into the lake of forgetfulness and he remembers it no more. That is my confession as a believer. Amen. And I've got to come confidently before the Lord. I've got to know that God will do this for me. I know that He will forgive me. I thank God that He's removed my sins as far as the east is from the west. Cast it into the lake of forgetfulness and remember it no more. Hmm. Number four. The believer's confession of faith. The believer's confession of faith. Confession of our faith in the Word, in Christ, and in God the Father. It's a confession of our faith in the Word of God, in Christ the Son of God, and in God the Father. Confessing our faith, faith, professing our faith. That is my confession. So the first one deals with sin. The second one deals with a sinner in the new covenant. The third one deals with my confession as a believer. And here now tonight, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 yes, in the new covenant. And so number four is, is that the believer's confession of faith. So in other words, not about only to repent, to ask for restoration, to ask God to forgive me even though I'm a believer, but I've got to continuously confess my faith in the Word, in Christ, and in God the Father. Are you with me, family? Because believing plus confession equals activated faith. You can believe, but if you don't activate your faith through confession, I could say that it is dead faith. So we see that we have to believe, we have to activate, and that equals, oh sorry, sorry, we gotta believe plus confess, and that equals activated faith. My faith has gotta be activated, no matter where I go, family. As a believer, I've gotta know what is right and what is wrong. I've gotta take, I feel the dry bones, rattling, I've got to take my faith and I've got to know what I've got to repent of before covenant. But now as I'm a believer in covenant, I know that I can turn to 1 John 1 verse 9, ask for forgiveness and He's faithful and just and He will cleanse me from all of righteousness and forgive me in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see here, watch this. Right thinking, believing and confession is essential. What you think and what you believe will affect your confession. What you believe and what you think will affect your confession. If you cannot think on the Word of God and meditate on the things of God, you are, you are going to think of other things and you're going to believe on other things and it will, will affect your confession. So when trouble comes, what do you say? Let's go in the name of Jesus. Or do you say, what is going on? What are you thinking and what are you believing will affect your confession? Number two, if your thinking is right, your confession will be right. The thinking is right, your confession will be right because what you meditate on will eventually get in your heart. I feel the dry bones. I feel the dry bones. Number three. <laughs> ah, getting ready for a Holy Ghost move. Hey, getting ready for a Holy Ghost move. Yes. Hey. Woo. If your believing is right, your confession will be right. If you believe right, not all the junk that's being preached that is not in the Word of God, that is not the Gospel of Christ. We're talking about if your believing is right, your confession will be right. Confession is three things. 
One, confession is starting something we believe. Confession is stating, sorry, not starting. Confession is stating something we believe. What do you believe in tonight? What do you believe in God for? What is it that you believe in His Word? What is it that you believe that He can do for you? Come on, I feel the dry bones. Number two, confession is declaring something we know to be true. Hey man, I once was sick, but today I am healed. I know that my life was dead, but it is alive today. Number three, confession is proclaiming a truth we've accepted wholeheartedly. Father, even though they say something different, your Bible says, your word says, you will never leave me. You will never forsake me. You can call those things that are not as though they were. I wholeheartedly believe it in the name of Jesus. You see, we lose our testimony when we sin because we are not confident to proclaim our testimony. So what is it? 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 Say? What is it? Uh, uh, a confession. The dictionary says that to confess means to acknowledge or to own up or to acknowledge faith in it. Do you have faith in your confession? It also means to make confession of one's faults. So if you if you sin, you ask for repentance. Or you, you repent, you ask for forgiveness rather. Getting ahead of myself here. Yeah. What are we to confess? Okay, are you ready? These are the things that we must confess. One. What God has done for us through Christ in His plan of salvation. Father, I thank You. Come on, bring it up a little bit. Bring it up, bring it up. Come on, stand. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. What God has done for us by the Word. Father, I thank You, Father, for moving mightily and powerfully in my life. Thank You for saving me, Lord Jesus. I give You all the praise, all the glory. Father, where it doesn't look like there's any life, I hear some rattling happening. I hear some dry bones moving in Jesus' name. Number two, what God has done in us by the Word. Thank You for the Word. It has changed my life in Jesus' name. Number three, Who we are to God, the Father in Christ Jesus. We are the redeemed. We are the redeemed. Ah. And the Father and Jesus makes intercession for us on the right hand of the Father. Continuously interceding for us. Number four, what Jesus is presently doing for us, making intercession. Number five, what God can accomplish through us, through us, with us. If you are willing to move with God's plan for your life, okay? His word will accomplish through us as we proclaim. As we proclaim, you've got to say it with your mouth. You've got to not just believe it, but you've got to say it with your mouth. You've got to say it with your mouth, all right? So therefore, we've got to confess the following. Number one, I am a new creature in Christ. Say that. I am a new creature in Christ. Number two, I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am free in Jesus' name. The Word of God works through my life with power and authority in Jesus' name. Number three, I am the redeemed. I have been redeemed from the curse of proper poverty. I am rich. In Christ, everything I need is in the Word of God. The blessing of Abraham is on my life. The blessing of Abraham is threefold. Number one, it was a material or financial blessing. Come on, it's a material or a financial blessing. There, the the scriptures is in the notes if you want it. Number two, it was a physical blessing. Physical manifestation of that. Number three, it was a spiritual blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, like Isaac prayed over his sons and released, Father, a material blessing, a physical blessing, a spiritual blessing. In the name of Jesus, now if you're ready to receive it, I release... 
a material blessing, a physical blessing, a spiritual blessing over your life in the name of Jesus. Come on. I hear the dry bones rattling. I hear the dry bones rattling. Come on. Let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. I want you to declare what God has done for you. All dreams are coming alive. Jesus. Thank you for watching the Christian Family Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join our online community and join us live every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share this with your friends. Thank you again for watching and God bless you.